we are going to be talking about respiratory and digestive histology now. So in respiratory histology, it is a very small um, unit. So here you're going to see the lung. Remember the lung is going to look like um, air pockets or popcorn. So here you see the little air pockets and popcorn of the lung. So if I said on a practical identify this organ or gland, you would put lung. Now there are a few um, structures that you need to be aware of. So this long tube here, this huge long tube is going to be your bronchiole. And then your bronchiole is going to lead in to these alveolar ducts. Okay, so again, this large tube is your bronchiole and it's going to lead into your alveolar ducts. Now at the end of the alveolar ducts, you're going to have these pockets. These huge pockets are called your alveolar sacs and each one of these tiny bubbles at the end of the alveolar sac is called an alveoli or alveolus. Okay. In this second slide here, you'll see another picture um, showing the lung. So again, this really long tube here is going to be your bronchiole, and your bronchiole is going to lead into your alveolar ducts. So that you'll see an alveolar duct here as well. Okay, you'll see an alveolar duct is here as well. Another one here. Okay, so this big long one in blue here, this is going to be your bronchiole, and then it's leading to these blue areas, which are your alveolar ducts. Again, at the end of your alveolar ducts is a large area called your alveolar sac. And in these alveolar sacs, each one of these little bubbles or air pockets is called an alveoli or an alveolus. Alveolus is singular, alveoli is plural, but on the practical, they'll take either one. Okay. Oops, hang on, sorry. Let me erase all of this. Okay. Okay. Now let's go down into our trachea. Okay. Our trachea is going to be composed of pseudostratified pseudo columnar epithelial. If you remember, pseudostratified epithelium is going to have a lot of cilia. So you will see all along here all that cilia up top here. And those are going to be like, if you think about your nose, you have all those nose hairs, that's going to be the cilia. And in this pseudostratified epithelium, you're going to have these goblet cells. Remember, your goblet cells are going to be producing your mucus. And underneath this uh, pseudostratified epithelium here, you're going to have glands underneath. So these are going to be um, made up of those cuboidal cells. So you'll see there those round organize, organized cuboidal cells. Okay, let me erase this one and we'll go to the next. Okay, here are just more pictures of the trachea. And again, if I ask you what organ or gland this is, you're going to say trachea. If I ask you what kind of tissue this is, you're going to say pseudostratified columnar epithelial tissue. Um, the structures you have to identify will be the cilia. So you can see the cilia up top here. You can see goblet cells. So here's a goblet cell down at the bottom picture. There's a goblet cells. And what you'll notice is at the base of that pseudostratified epithelium, um, you are going to see, let me change colors here. You are going to see those round glands, okay? Remember, that's going to be your cuboidal cells, okay? So again, 
this organ or gland would be trachea. Make sure you know that it's made up of pseudostratified columnar epithelium. And make sure you can identify the cilia and uh, goblet cells. Erase that and we'll go on. Okay, so um, now you have to be able to recognize respiratory epithelium of the trachea versus olfactory epithelium. So remember your respiratory epithelium is gonna go down the trachea. And that's the one we just talked about that was pseudostratified columnar epithelium with your cilia and your goblet cells. Okay, but what is olfactory epithelium? If you'll remember back to AP1, in the roof of the nasal cavity, or up in the roof of the nose, you had epithelium that were specialized to detect chemicals um, for smell. Olfactory means the sense of smell. So you'll see here that, let me get my colors again. This one here is going to be your respiratory epithelium or your trachea, and you'll see it's much thinner. And then, let me change colors here. Right here, this is going to be your olfactory epithelium. What you'll see is it's much thicker than your respiratory epithelium. So your respiratory epithelium is not very thick. It's just like that right there, okay? So that's one way you can detect the differences. Another way is you can see um, down here that in your respiratory epithelium, again, it's much thicker, so it's gonna cover all of this. And there are no goblet cells. So you don't have any goblet cells in this respiratory epithelium. See, there's none to be found here, okay? So if I show you this picture up here in the blue, um, this picture is gonna be your olfactory epithelium. And this in with the yellow scribbling on it, this is gonna be your olfactory epithelium, uh, sorry, your um, respiratory epithelium of the trachea. Okay, I'm gonna erase all that and we will go on to the next. Okay, here is another picture. Um, here you'll see the respiratory epithelium. There are no goblet cells in here. Um, it's a lot cleaner looking than the trachea and it's much thicker, okay? Now salivary glands. In salivary glands, in your lab book, you'll see that there are three different pictures of them. In the lab, y'all will not have to say which kind of salivary gland it is. You'll just have to identify that this tissue or this organ or gland is a salivary gland. So in the salivary gland here, again, let me get my colors here. In the salivary gland, you're gonna see these cells right here. These are your mucus producing cells. Okay, you'll see they're very clear. It doesn't look like there's anything in them. Those are your mucus cells. Then you have um, the ducts. Remember your ducts are gonna be cuboidal epithelium. And so here you'll see the ducts, okay? Um, another thing to look for in here is all of this in the blue that I'm circling here, these are gonna be your serous cells. So they're very dark staining cells, okay? So again, in the green, you have your mucus cells. In the red, you're gonna have your cuboidal cells forming ducts. And then in the blue here, you're going to see your serous cells. So I'm gonna erase this and we'll go to the next picture. Okay, so this is showing again, um, the organ or gland here would be your salivary glands. And again, you're seeing the three different parts. You're seeing your dark staining serous cells out here, all of that all of this in here, those are your serous cells. Then you're seeing your, um, right here, 
your cuboidal epithelial cells that are forming your ducts. Okay, so you see some more over here. You're going to look for that when you're trying to identify it. And the last thing you can see are all of these mucus cells here. Okay. So those are three things you're gonna be looking for when trying to identify your salivary glands. And you'll see, um, we've taken this square from this top picture and we've just blown it up. So this picture at the very bottom right here, this is just that little square blown up. So you can see the cells um, at a much larger view. Okay, so I'm gonna erase all of this now so we can go on to the next. Okay. Sorry, didn't erase everything. Hang on just a sec. Let me finish erasing. Um, okay, I think that was it. Okay. So now we're done with respiratory and we're going into, actually we've already gone into the digestive because salivary glands would be part of your digestive. The next thing we're looking at here is the esophagus. So this top picture up here, this is zoomed out. So you'll see that um, this is the lumen of the um, esophagus here, where I'm drawing that green lines. This is the lumen or the inside opening space of the esophagus. So you'll see here, this is an esophagus that is not in the process of swallowing food. So it's collapsed down on itself. When it swallows, it will expand and open up, allowing uh, room for that food to pass on through. If you will see, we, um, let me erase that. You can see on the edges here, right, I don't know if it's gonna do it. Hang on just a sec, it's not picking up my colors here. Oh, goodness sakes. Hang on this thing, maybe I can get it here. Well, it has all messed up. Let me try it again. Okay, so right here, you can see that these cells that make up the edge of the esophagus all along here, these are gonna be the um, stratified squamous epithelium. So if you'll see down here on this bottom picture, all of this in the mucosa, all of this is your stratified squamous epithelium. Remember stratified is many, many layers. Um, your squamous are gonna be those squash cells. And you, the reason you have stratified squamous in your esophagus is because you have a lot of friction going on as that food moves down that esophagus. So every time your food gets swallowed down that esophagus, you slough off some of these layers, these top layers of that epithelium. Um, and being you slough off those layers, thank goodness, you have all the layers underneath so that you don't break through that esophagus, okay? Um, just like the outer lining of your skin on your arm, every time you brush against something, you slough off skin cells. But because you have so many layers, you can do that without damaging anything underneath. So when you're looking at the esophagus, again, on the top picture, what you're looking for is this collapsed tube. And in the bottom, if you blow the the esophagus up, the bottom picture, shows all of those stratified um, squamous epithelial cells there. Okay, this is another picture of the esophagus here. So again, remember that this is your lumen or that interior space forming that tube. And here you'll see that it is collapsed in on itself because you're not in the process of swallowing. And on the edge of that, I do not know why it won't pick this up. Okay, on the edge of your esophagus here, all of these cells right here, we're going to blow it up and we're gonna look at it right here. So you'll see you have all 
all of these layers here of your stratified squamous epithelium. You'll see how thick that is, again, because this is an area that has a lot of friction going on here. So you're constantly sloughing off these outer layers of your squamous epithelium. So you have all these layers underneath that are going to protect um, the esophagus, okay? So again, the organ or gland here would be esophagus and you don't, do not have to label any parts here, okay? Then going to the stomach. In the stomach, you're gonna be producing stomach acids. So you're gonna have these special glands called gastric glands and you'll see them here, they look like little pearl necklaces. These are your gastric glands. These are the glands responsible for producing your stomach acids. So you'll see them down here. These are your gastric glands, okay? They look like a pearl necklace or little squiggly lines at the very bottom. So again, those are your gastric glands. The other thing you're looking for here are these deep ditches called your gastric pits, okay? So you can see those deep ditches called gastric pits and they will eventually lead down into your gastric glands. So again, here you're gonna see your gastric pits in green and below that you will see your gastric glands that I circled a few of them in blue. So this organ or tissue would be stomach and the two things you're looking for here is your gastric pits and your gastric glands and you do need to be able to label your gastric pits and your gastric glands. You do not have to label from this microscope slide your layers. So you do, do not have to label your mucosa and your um, submucosa here. Let me erase all this and we will go to our next picture. Um, so again here you're seeing we're still in the stomach. Okay, so um, in the stomach you do have two types of cells that you have to label. You have your um, parietal cells and your chief cells. I'm going to go to this middle picture here let me get my colors again. Okay, the parietal cells are the ones that look like they have cotton candy for the cytoplasm. You'll see they have a very light, airy, fluffy looking cytoplasm. So in green there are your parietal cells. And your chief cells are the darker cells. You can see I circled some of them with the blue, okay? So your chief cells are the dark cells. I'm gonna circle some down here at the bottom. So the ones I'm circling in blue are gonna be chief cells. The, one I circle, the ones I circled in green are gonna be your parietal cells, okay? So again, remember you have to be able to label your gastric pits and your gastric glands. We saw that on a previous picture. And then here you have to be able to label your uh, parietal cells and your chief cells. And again, this organ or gland here is stomach. This is just a very, very blown up illustration on this page of the stomach. Okay, let's erase all this and go on to our next pictures. Okay. Um, I'm not going to talk about this set of pictures because it's uh, a lot harder to see, so I'm going to move on and I'm going to talk about these here. So this is your small intestines on this page. And your small intestines, remember, can be um, divided into three different sections. The first section leading out of the stomach is called your duodenum. That's what you're seeing in this picture. And what you're looking for here in your duodenum is your duodenum kind of looks like um, leaves in the fall. You know, your leaves in the fall turn brown and they get real crispy and when you step on them, they flake off. Um, so you have these little pieces of the duodenum that actually kind of flake off. So they remind you of leaves in the fall, okay? And then 
you, the next one you have is going to be your jejunum. Your jejunum has very, very distinct, long finger-like shapes, okay? So these finger-like shapes, each one of these fingers you can see over here is called a plica circularis. So each, whoops, each one of your plicas are very, very distinct, okay? So they're very dark bordered and very distinct. So when you see that, that's gonna be the jejunum. That's the middle section of your small intestines. Now the last one we see here is the ilium. And what you're looking for in the ilium are these circle called tires patches. And if you remember from our lymph, our lymphatic unit, tires patches are just lymphoid nodules. So the only one of these that have these lymphoid nodules called tires patches is going to be your ilium. So anytime you see the tires patches at the bottom, these big round nodules, you know that this is the ilium. Okay. So again, the three things to look for in these, the duodenum, the one at the top, remind, uh, remind you of dried leaves in the fall. When you step on, they flake off little leaf particles. So that's what you're seeing here. They flaked off. In the jejunum, the jejunum, you have very dark outlined, very distinct uh, plica circularis there. And you can see they're outlined in red there. And then the ilium at the bottom, the ilium is the last section of small intestines that will lead into the large intestine. And in this, what you're looking for are those lymphoid nodules called Peyer's patches. So that's how you identify the three different um, parts of your small intestine. So you will have to label these duodenum, jejunum, and ileum. And remember, all three of those are part or specific areas of the small intestines. So let's erase all of that. And we will go on to the next picture. Okay, here, the large intestines. <clears throat> so your large intestines are going to be your colon. Remember, um, a colon is just another name for large intestines. And what you're going to see here you're going to see on the sides of the, I'm going to just kind of color them in. On the sides, you're going to have all these little goblet cells lining. So if you'll see, I'm going to show you all where those little lines are. You see these goblet cells lining all the sides of the plica circularis. Okay. And the reason you have to have so many goblet cells is because remember, you have taken out most of the water. And so all you're left with from that food is the waste, the solid waste, which will be the poop, okay, that you're gonna defecate out. So you have to have all of those um, goblet cells lining those plica, circularis, plica circularises to um, let that waste slide very easily out of the colon and into the rectum. So this organ or gland is the large intestine, and the thing you're looking for here is the rows and rows of goblet cells lining those plica circularises. Okay, let me erase all that. Okay, so here you're gonna see um, the comparison here, and I am going to Mark the esophagus out here. So don't pay attention to this picture because it's really a bad picture of the esophagus. But we are going to look at the stomach and the um, small intestine versus large intestine. So the stomach here, remember you have those gastric glands and you have the gastric pits up here. Okay. So you can see the gastric pits up top and the gastric glands at the bottom. Okay, so that clues you in that that's a stomach. Okay, the next one we are going to look at is the small intestine here. And remember the small intestine, they have very large, distinct uh, plica circularises. 
Now remember from a few slides ago, you do have to be able to identify the duodenum from the jejunum from the ileum. So go back to that picture so you can learn the differences between the two, or between the three, I'm sorry. And then the last one we have here is the large intestines. And the large intestines you'll see is gonna be lined with goblet cells along their pleca. So you can see all those goblet cells there. So that clues you in that this organ or gland is large intestines, okay? So we're gonna erase all that. And we're gonna go down to the liver. I'm gonna go to this picture here and then I will go back to the previous picture because what I want you to see here is you'll see in blue circled here that these pentagon or hexagon shapes, though each one of those pentagon or hexagon shapes is gonna be called a liver lobule. And in the center of the liver lobule, you have this opening right here. And you have, this one's not showing it, but you have one in the middle of each one of these liver lobules. That is your central vein. You'll see it's right here. It's blown up in this picture up here. So in the middle of the liver lobule, you have an opening for the central vein. Okay, then you will see, let me see which picture shows it best. Oh, hold on just a second. Okay, we're gonna go back up to this picture here because you can see the other parts that we need to know really well here. So you see these little spaces, these little canals that come out right here. These little canals are called your liver sinusoids. So they're little bitty tiny canals leading away from the center of your liver lo lobules. See those different canals? Again, those are gonna be your liver sinusoids. And each one of these cells in your liver, let me get a color you can see here. Each one of those cells, I don't know if you can see it where I'm drawing in green there. Each one of those cells is called a hepatocyte. Okay, so every, every one of those nuclei are the nuclei of a hepatocyte. A hepatocyte, remember hepato means liver and site means cell. I'm gonna go down to the next picture here. So each one of those cells here, you'll see they're, I mean, they're just side by side by side by side. Each one of those cells is called a hepatocyte. So again, this organ or gland would be the liver. And you have to be able to label the liver lobule, remember the pentagon or hexagon shapes, the center hole called the central vein, the sinusoids, which are these little canals, and the hepatocytes, which are the cells of the liver, okay? So now we're gonna go down to the pancreas. We've had the pancreas before, so this should be a review for you, okay? So here, remember to identify the pancreas, what you're looking for is this wad of lighter colored cells called the um, islets of Langerhans or the pancreatic islets or islets. Um, I say islets for y'all so you can remember to put the S in there when you're spelling it on your practical. So anytime you see this wad of lighter colored cells, that clues you in that this is the pancreas. Okay, so we're gonna go down and look at it blown up. So blown up here again, you can see the same thing. So you see this wad of lightly colored cells here. That is your pancreatic islets or islets or your islets of Langerhans, okay? And these darker cells, oh, not red, that's not gonna show up very well. These cells where you have the darker outline and the lighter middle color of the cells, these are gonna be your pancreatic asini or pancreatic asini, depending on how you pronounce it, okay? So all of those are gonna be your pancreatic asini. Uh, so again, this organ or gland is going to be the pancreas. You 
do need to be able to label the uh, pancreatic islets or islets and the pancreatic acini. Okay. Okay, and that is all of the histology for the respiratory and digestive systems. I will put together a, um, a practice quiz over histology and I will send that out as well to each of you. Have a great week.